What's going on, Altcoin Buzz Army? This is Jeff with Altcoin Buzz. So, um, my plan with this video here is to put out some investment strategies that have worked for me so far and share them with you, whether you're a newbie or an intermediate, just some things that have worked for me. And bearing in mind, this is not professional financial advice and you need to take accountability for your own uh, investments, but I do like to share my strategy and my opinion with you guys because you ask. Now, with that being said, um, you have to understand that in order to be able to make these videos, I we have to make income as a channel. Um, just like CNBC, just like MTV, um, just like whoever your favorite TV show is, Casey Neistat, um, Gary V. Just like you yourself, you have a day job. You have to earn money. So this channel, we run ads and sometimes we will do a sponsored video. And I'm putting that out there to let you guys know that if you get a sour attitude about the fact that we are also looking to run this as a business, you have to bear in mind that my goal is to be fully transparent with you, but you have to realize, yes, there is gonna be video ads that are going to appear in the videos because we're looking to make some income also as we continue to give you these investment advice. Now, we're not going to ask you guys for donations. We're not going to ask you guys for any money, but those ads and stuff that you will see will be out there because that's how we as a community can afford to build the altcoin buzz team. Whether we do a application or we build something, we have to also pay people because uh, currency, money is what makes the world go around. So I'm putting that out there um, to let you guys know that yes, we will be monetizing this channel um, and that is going to give us the funds so that you guys can watch for free. Okay, so you just have to come to terms with that and it's like your boss trying to ask you to work for free. <laughs> you know, you have to say like, you have to sit down and say, look boss, I got to pay my rent. I got bills to pay. I, I need equipment. You know, I got to pay my car insurance. So um, if you don't understand that, then um, maybe you're missing the whole point of uh, finance, really. So but at the same time, the, the my main goal is to figure out a way to um, keep this channel growing and keep this uh, community growing and funding it without asking you guys to pay us anything or do anything outside of what you want to do. I mean, if it means you have to watch a an ad, then so be it, okay? Um, if you watch a sponsored review, then so be it. But we will let you know when it's a sponsored review and when it is not, okay? Most of the videos that I personally do, I will put this out there, most of the stuff that I personally do will not be sponsored or anything. I am the one who is going to be giving it to you raw and real. If other people make a video, they will be making a video, but I, if I make a video that is sponsored, I will let you know straight off the bat. But for the most part, I plan to just be the one who you guys can really just come to with questions and concerns or whatever and know that my role is to give it to you guys as raw and real. And that's not the, the people who are going to be doing the sponsored ads. That doesn't make them any less important. As a matter of fact, they might be just as important, OK, because that's the one that's funding the growth. All right. So just putting that out there, right? Well, well, there will be ads on our videos, the ones that I do. But as far as sponsored reviews, I don't intend to do any of those. If I do, I will let you know. So let's get straight into this, okay? So some of the things that I've found to be useful. All right. So give you, give you an example of the Verge situation. So we made a video about Verge when it went to, when it was at, um, what was it? If we just look one month ago. We made a video when Verge was down here, right? Way down here, like below a penny, right? Yeah, I want to say like right here. All right, so I, I held it, but I noticed that it started to take off. Now, we, we didn't pump the video. I mean, there was a McAfee tweet. There, um, there was a bunch of different news. There was already a big community behind Verge. People got excited about Wraith Protocol. We were just a microcosm in the whole thing. I mean, XVG Whale, he, he can take all the credit for all I'm concerned. I don't even want the credit for pumping anything because then I got to deal with all the pump critics. But the point is, is that um, 
typically I take out a position. I'm prepared to wait six months to a year to even up to three years if I really, 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 really need to. Okay. But, um, being that I also realize that things can grow really fast in cryptocurrency, I'm also ready to take profit at a certain point. Now, don't get me wrong. When Verge went to seven cents, I thought about selling. Okay. When Verge went to 15 cents, I thought about selling, but I did not. And then when it went to 27 cents or 28 cents, I thought about selling, but I did not. But then when it pulled back and I started to see some things, I was like, hmm, would I actually consider selling parting ways with Verge? And when it went up to 19 cents, I decided to part ways with it. And my $200 Verge investment turned into a lot more than that, right? So um, with that being said, I took, I, I sold all, I sold half of it at first. And then I waited another day and I said, you know what, I'll just sell the rest. And I cut ties with Verge. And what I was thinking in my mind was, well, where's the next big Verge gains? And I realized that Verge could go to a dollar. It could go to $15 for all we know. I don't know how high Verge will go. We don't. And I'm not going to say that it can go either which way, but I decided that 19 times gains was good enough for me and that I would put it into a new cryptocurrency. So notice I did two things in that. And this is just what I did. You don't have to always do it like that. I sold half of my position. And then two days later, I decided to part ways with my second part of that uh, position. And what I ended up doing was putting it into um, brand new altcoins, brand new cryptocurrencies that I think will also have that kind of five to 10 times gains. But I didn't just put it into one of them, although I could have. I forked that those gains into new potential gainers, right? So you, you'll notice that I'm, 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 because I diversified into four different new positions with those um, gains that I got, Okay. And I know you guys are asking about taxes and I don't still full, have the full answer on that. As a matter of fact, the United States government just recently passed a tax bill that isn't going to include trading in 2018. So I have to confront that just as you guys will. It's not that I'm uh, saying, oh yeah, the tax man's great. No, I'm not saying that. Obviously who wants to pay a lot in taxes, but Hey, you know, I can't get away from it. And if I want to, you know, keep doing business legally, I'm going to have to pay the piper as they would say. Right. But doesn't mean that I love to pay taxes. <laughs> just means that I got to figure out a way that I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it in compliance with what the laws of the land say. Right. But yes, in making these trades, I am acquiring more and more trading power. Right. Now, with that being said, um, going into some of these coins, some of them could in turn have 19 to 20 times gains or more. So that fork could grow even more exponentially. So it's like a snowball, right? The snowball is going down the hill and it just keeps building more and more snow and just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it becomes an avalanche. Okay. So that's the whole thing. And eventually that, that nice little layer of snow just sits there and provides a nice cushion for you. Right now, what I mean by that, putting it into new coins that have high potential. And I've gone over this several times in the previous videos, but because I haven't fully gone over it with you guys, some of you new guys who might be watching this, if you go here to recently added, I can get an idea of where some of these new coins are. Okay. And how, and why I'm doing it like this now. Okay. Is because if I go to historical snapshots, I can see that some of these other coins were once little babies like these, that ended up growing. So I'm looking for the next big oak trees. And some of the things that stand out to me are the volumes of cash. So if I see something like $24 million, that stands out to me, even 61 million, right? Um, I'm into U-Trust right now. There's, it's still a low volume. It's only got a market cap below 100 million. That's not a lot. But something like this, you know, I might say, well, it, it doesn't appear to be doing too successful, but I might still consider getting into that position if the tech is good. And in order to get into the tech and know if it's good, I'd have to go to their website and I'd have to pull it up. And if it moves very fast, it's interesting. And if I come here and I see, by the way, this is the first time I'm on this <laughs> currency and it already kind of caught my attention because the website moves lightning quick. And it says a decentralized open source community driven digital currency focusing on e-commerce utility. Interesting. So see like this strike, it just hit the market. It's going under the radar. Like it's not doing anything. It's got a low total supply, low max supply. 
where can I even get it? Coin markets and stocks.exchange. So it appears these are some of the uh, more popular new exchanges. So maybe it's worth it to have an account on some of these smaller exchanges. I don't know about these exchanges. I'm not an advocate for them, but being that they typically are the ones where these new coins get accepted, then maybe having an account on them is worth it, especially if we're trying to adopt this philosophy, this technique that we're applying. So, um, you know, it's, I don't know enough about it. It's got atomic swap. It's got privacy. It's got self-funded. So it's got basically, so here's another thing to keep in mind, guys. Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's biggest knock on it is that it's an outdated tech. So a lot of these cryptocurrencies that came out last year, they're now outdated to the new Lamborghini. It's like, these are the 2018 versions of the Lambo, right? The 2017 is now old news. So these guys would take, let's just say they did something like, I, I don't know, this is an e-commerce, so it's not necessarily like Verge. But let's say Verge is like the 2017 version, and now there's an, the next best thing of privacy coins, but it also comes with e-commerce utility. and So it's like a hybrid, right? So now you're even getting the big picture of why this could be even more interesting. And so like Bitcoin was the first one, but now it's like, high it's high cost in mining high cost and it takes a long time to transfer it's high network fees because it's expensive and it's kind of uh it's kind of outdated tech right so with these new coins that they've learned from the old ones and they've brought out the new version right that's another reason why i'm very excited for these new recently added coins all right so here's another thing that i'm going to point out so Buy low, sell high. That's always our core uh, mentality. That's like our core mantra. What I mean by that is when something is on a dip or on a low, we might buy it. Like Bitcoin Gold, for example. Now, Bitcoin Gold is a fork of Bitcoin, but it's on a dip. So we'd buy it low. We wouldn't buy it on an all-time high. We'd buy it low. So right now, when people are like not really too stoked on Bitcoin Gold, Maybe it's a good time to consider taking out a position on Bitcoin Gold if you like the tech, if you believe in the team, and if you believe in the project. You don't. You, when it's down like this, that's when you want to get in because when it when it when it's patient like that, like look at Ripple, right? So no one was too excited about Ripple when it was down at these prices. Everybody was down on Ripple. They're like, "What? Well, this is the most boring coin to ever own." But then all of a sudden, they ended up. Uh, biting their tongue because they're like, uh, um, uh, I sold my ripple at 25 cents because I was bored with it and I wanted to put it into something. They might have even taken a loss because they weren't patient. And then now all of a sudden it's sitting up here at what? 222. So yeah, you have to be willing to be patient when you buy at the low. So when you're buying on a low, when it's in the red, you have to be patient and you got to be willing to put in, say, look, you're willing to wait a year. You're willing to wait six months, but you're hoping that it'll happen a lot faster so that you can take your profits and fork it into something new, right? That's another thing. You don't actually lose or gain in a transaction unless your token, unless you sell, right? So if you sell low, you don't take, a, that's when you take a loss. But if your position goes lower than what you bought it at, yeah, you're upside down at that moment, but you don't actually lose on that until you say trade or you sell it, right? So same thing with the adverse. If it's really high and you sell high, that's when you actually get the gains. Like I got 19 times gains out of Verge because I sold it when it was at 19 times gains. Like if it went up to 27 cents, I didn't get it. At, even though I was excited to see it go to 27 cents, I didn't actually get any of the benefits of it going to 27 cents because it... um. I didn't sell them, right? So, I, but it's when you sell and when is when you get your loss or your gains. And I always recommend in a bull market that you should be willing to be patient for it to come back out of the red and go back into the green so that you can take your profits. Okay, so that goes back to why we don't buy at all time highs. Like right now is not the best time to get into Ripple, even though people are FOMOing into Ripple. And we'll see that with Litecoin recently. So, Litecoin. It had this um, massive run and people, when they saw it go up to three, 366, they were like, oh my gosh, I got to get, get into Litecoin. I got to get in there. And then Litecoin peels back. Here's Steve again. Um, Steve, Steve messages me and I have my Skype on. Anyways, so Steve, the guy who um, makes videos for us. But anyway, so 
you can see because someone who bought at this all time high, they fall into it. Now they're like, oh, man, they're taking a loss. Now they have to be real patient with Litecoin. They have to wait six months to a year for this thing to go back up. Right. So that's just the way it is. Anyways, um, the next thing that we're going to look at is, well, we already talked about buying the dip. So if you're looking to get into Litecoin, now might be a good time because it's on a dip. But we don't know how low this dip is going to go because we have to read the charts. Um, to see if it's starting to go up. It looks like it might be starting to recover and finding resistance here around this range, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't know for a fact. Now, I already mentioned this, and this is on my notes. Be willing to hold for the long term, so I'm going to go ahead and bypass that because I've already drilled that home with you. If you FOMO and take out a small position, okay, so recently, I'll give you an example of my recent FOMO with Publica, and I'll tell you why I FOMO'd into it and why I'm not too concerned. So I did FOMO into Publica. Let's just take a look at the, the monthly. Actually, the seven days better. Okay, so I FOMO'd into Publica at 92 cents. Well, now it's back up to 93 cents. But I had some Bitcoin laying around and I said, you know, what if it pulls back? I'll just take out, I'll take out my core position, like because I believe that this thing's gonna have a higher than $17 million market cap at some point. So I was like, I'll take out my uh, core position right here and I'll even buy it at 92, 92 cents because I think it's going to go up a whole lot more, right? And I know some of you guys like to talk in Satoshis, I talk in Fiat. I, I'm sorry if that doesn't work for you. I just talk in Fiat. So um, pay attention to Satoshis though, and I, I'm not saying to don't do that, but I just don't really do that. But the... Um, but I also was saying, well, if it goes back down, I'll hold a reserve fund to jump back in and, and buy back into the um, Publica position if it peeled back. And when it did peel back, I bought back in. I bought back in actually, I bought more like 74 cents. Now I went all the way down to here and I had already used up all my reserve. But you see how taking out my core position and not just throwing all of it in there on a FOMO action, I, I was like, well, it, it's kind of sitting at an all-time high at this point. I knew it was sitting at an all-time high, and I was FOMOing in because I knew that there was a lot of room to grow. A, a cryptocurrency like this is going to have a $100 million market cap, in my opinion. It's not professional financial advice, but due to the fact that I looked at the tech and I looked at what it was up to, I, I found it reasonable to suggest that it would be at that price, being that it's a brand new cryptocurrency. So I took out my core position. But because I'm exercising on the side of caution, I'm also not necessarily putting all my money in at an all-time high. But I'm willing to be patient for a couple of days and see if it peels back because more than likely, after it reaches an all-time high, it'll go back down to a dip, which created a buying opportunity to put the majority of my funds that I wanted to invest in 93 cents in here. So now I've got two positions. I invested the one at 92. I got 500 of these at 92. Or Did I get 500? No. That would make me $500. I don't know how much I put in, but I, I, I'm i basically giving you fictitious numbers, but you get the idea here. Uh, some 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 amount there I invested, okay, at $0.92, cents, but it wasn't my full thing. It was half of it or less than half of it, 50% of it. And then when it pulled back down here, I put more in right around here. $0.74, cents, right? So now I'm up on this position overall because I was just willing to be patient and not put all my money in at one time. So that's why I say reserve some if it pulls back, realizing that usually when it hits an all-time high, it'll pull back if you're FOMOing into it. Whereas with Ripple and Litecoin, we saw like some, I think Litecoin went on a six-day run. I think uh, Ripple went on a three-day run, three or four-day run, and it's still probably not even done Ripple isn't, but we'll see. But I'm not FOMOing into Ripple right now at all. If I wanted to get into Ripple, I should have already done it. So I'm looking for the next coin that's going to run like Ripple. And that could be Cardano. But Cardano's approach, it's definitely at an all-time high, but it's approaching a um, too high point. So I would say that if you wanted to get into Cardano at this point, you should wait until it finds more resistance because let's just look at Cardano, for example. Because they got big news coming out, but they're still sitting at here at the like all-time high range. Now, last time I bought into, so I bought into Cardano at $0.02, cents, I sold at $0.10, cents, which was not, uh, you know, I took my five times gains, and then it shot back up, and I was like, bummer, bummerville. It went up to like $0.50, cents, and I was like, man, I should have just held. 
And then when it peeled back then to 38 cents, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy back in on the dip. And then now it's up again. So I bought in at like 37 cents and now it's sitting at 71 cents. So I'm back to two times games with Cardano and I'm cool with that. And I'm now going to actually be really patient with Cardano probably and wait it out to see what 2018 brings. And I wouldn't be surprised if this catches up to some of these other cryptocurrencies. Now, with that being said, um, here's a very valuable tool that I've discovered that I think would be of use to you guys if you're looking at a platform like Cardano. So Ethereum's like an iOS um, or an Android, right? So these application developer platforms like Ethereum, NXT, Omni, um, Neo, Counterparty, Neo, you're seeing that Ethereum mostly dominates this. But as time goes by, if you check this, you'll start to discover that there's starting to be more cryptocurrencies built on these application developer platforms. Right now, we don't see anything for Cardano. But once we start seeing a whole bunch of tokens being built on the Cardano blockchain, that's when Cardano is going to really start making its move. Although I would say that it's probably premature to see that Cardano is at such a high market cap based on pure speculation. There's nothing other than speculation to drive Cardano's price. It doesn't have any tokens built on it right now. It's just got a great tech and a, and a bullish technology with a bullish team that people are basically saying, oh, Ethereum's the next, or Cardano's the next Ethereum or an Ethereum killer, right? So we don't have, we don't see any ADA coins here, but we do see NEO starting to get in there. We see some QTUM. So, Right now, it's mostly dominated by Ethereum. Could could Ethereum lose its uh, appeal? Sure, that's possible. Waves is starting to get in there. NXT again. Um, and there's a long list here, but I strongly recommend you take a look at that. Now, if you, do, if you don't know the difference between a token and a coin, like coins are basically... See, Ethereum's a coin. So it's, it's not a token. Anything built on an application developer platform is is an actual um, token anything that's not a developer platform or that's not a token like something like an ERC20 token for example is built on the Ethereum blockchain but these are coins so let's see verge is a coin meaning that it's its own currency lisk is another developer uh, co coin that could have tokens built on there but no right now there's no lisk tokens I, ho I hope that kind of makes sense. I know it's kind of confusing, but you can get a look at like Electronium's a coin. It's not a um, token. It's not built on Ethereum or anything. So if you just wanted to know the difference between those, you can go on coin market cap right under here where it says market cap. You can look all coins and tokens, right? And I'm just putting that out there is uh, the more you know kind of thing, right? Now, the next thing I'm going to recommend is try some ICOs, okay? Now, Usually the indication of a strong ICO more likely than not is if it's close to selling out. So for me, the, the ICOs that I participated in that were close to selling out or that did actually sell out typically end up legitimizing it because that means there's more market capital coming in. Sure, you can find those awesome projects that just don't put any money into marketing that end up becoming phenomenal projects and there are those that exist in the ICO space. But um, like Wax, for example. Wax is, a, is an ICO that I participated in and it knocked it out of the park. It, it sold out, I want to say. So because of that, um, you know, I we'll see where that goes. But that usually is an indication that it's going to go up even more. Like Power Ledger, for example. When Power Ledger first hit the market, it was at four cents. I participated in that ICO and it went all the way up to a dollar. So if I had just caught on to Power Ledger after it had hit the market, it might have sold for 50 cents or, you know, and I would have never been able to get it at the four, at below four cents. And I want to say I even got it at a better rate than four cents because I participated in the ICO. So you can see if it's a great project and it's got a lot of room to grow, participating in ICO can be very um, positive for you with your gains. OK, so here's another thing. Let's be real about this. Some of you, some even myself, we are invested in some projects that just 
won't ever be anything that will fizzle out at some point. But right now they have hype behind them. And we're, even though we don't technically want to do this by our core values, sometimes we still do do this. So my advice to you is if you do get into a project that's just not very, that's not run very good, take your gains and get it into something like Bitcoin or IOTA or Cardano after you've taken your gains. So if you get 10 times gains out of a junk coin, take your 10 times gains and put it into um, something that's more sustainable long term because the sustainable projects will be around a lot longer than these uh, fly by night coins that are kind of like in a way, quote unquote, pump and dumps. OK, so that's and I'm not going to name names about what are junk coins and what aren't, but you get the idea the coins that, you know, really don't have strong projects, don't have any reason to believe that they're going to be around for a long time, but they get a lot of hype and they pump high. Take your profits on those and move on, fork it into something more sustainable. But because you've got into that pump coin, you can get more buying power with your favorite um, long term hold. Right. So with all that, I mean, like I said, check the recently added, try to participate in some ICOs, um, get on to Twitter. I do recommend that you get on to Twitter if you're not already on to Twitter. I mean, you can follow the likes of Ripple on Twitter and stay up to date with them. Look at this. Twitter is just an outstanding platform to stay up to date with all these cryptocurrencies. You can even follow the CEO of Brad, um, Twitter. As a matter of fact, I will too, just to see what he's, or the CEO of Ripple, I should say. Now, you can also follow us. We try to do our best to stay, keep you guys up to date on Twitter. I know I mentioned it in about every video because our goal using Twitter is to refine everything that this community talks about. So that's altcoin buzz IO. All right. So anyways, guys, if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe. And if you've been subscribed, you can click that bell button and get notified when we drop videos just like this. We'll see you guys next time.